Hey, kitty girls, it's Sunday, June 30th, 2024, and welcome to Cubs Out Loud Drag Race Tea Time, where we will be discussing episodes seven and eight of All Stars 9 in our little show here, meeting in the ladies room and make your own kind of ruzik. Uh, this is our third uh, recap discussion type episode in this particular series. For those of you that don't know, my name is Gary. With me is my ever fabulous co-host. Hello, everyone. It's Damon. How are you doing today? <laughs> Probably better than Chanel. What? I'm just... Ooh, no, she better don't. But I did. So <laughs> I'm just calling it out. It's just redunculous. What okay. is happening? What is happening? I mean... What is happening? What is happening? What's happening? More to come on that later. But yeah, there's, there's, uh -huh. there's just... It's just just sort of mind-boggling mm -hmm. i can understand that absolutely we can talk about that yeah. we're going to talk about that i'm sure i'm i'm sure but we are I see, I see the doc and we i think we are <laughs> Woo. all right so with that do we want to jump into our first segment <laughs> let's do it all right racers start your engines and may the best drag queen win unless you got bursitis in your shoulder and you're not willing to lift your arm anymore anyways my theory and i'm sticking to it just say it <laughs> used to be the statue of liberty not anymore now it's the like queen wave it's like um well it's a little higher than queen actually wave. it was it wasn't quite statue of liberty it was hamburger mary's there you go and then like something happened over the past two seasons we've noticed that now it's just been like maybe a little bit longer than that yeah i don't know all right, so put the pedal to the metal. These are our thoughts uh, on these two particular latest episodes. These are in three groupings, which are serves, swerves, and nerves. So serves are the things that we're giving kudos to. These are like, you know, the standout items that we wanted to give uh, props for. And then the swerves are things that we just cannot not comment on because, mm -hmm. girl, that's, that was a road hazard. Yeah. You should have avoided that. And then nerve is like kind of our potluck category because it could be something really good. Like, girl, you got nerve. Like, go you. Or uh, I got I got <laughs> I got the best clip for this. What the fuck you doing? Yeah, <laughs> that, that part. That, that part. Yeah. All right, David, who are you uh, given serve to or for what? I guess uh, I should say. So I'm going to give my serves and I wrote down the fast hand of Miss Roxy. OK. So during the, this most recent episode, the design challenge, mm -hmm. where they were making the outfits, I don't know if you saw it, but I saw it. She was stoning the fuck, and she was like zooming, and uh huh. She and 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 with that, you look at the outfit she made. She made essentially a um, bodysuit, a fringe jacket mm -hmm. maybe bolero and chaps and there was stoning on the chaps there was stoning on the bodysuit i believe and i on the think, back of it yeah, yeah on the back of the bodysuit i don't think there was stoning on the jacket i don't think so i don't think so i know that she has the 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 like crystal fringe like coming down the the chaps but that I just, I mean, we have seen Roxy, and she has been doing really, we know that she could turn an outfit out. Mm -hmm. So I'm giving my props to her because that takes a lot. Mm -hmm. And stoning, and granted, yes, she didn't stone a whole, like, like hundred, like, thing and made a whole gown or whatever. But, like, just the speed at which she was able to create this garment and still help a little bit. She did intentionally, like go back on her helping this time around because she wanted to win and that showed um but still was doing and making incredible stuff and i really like her garment i think it hits the um the theme of lady cowboy well and mm -hmm. yeah i just I, I just enjoy it i wish she hadn't the only critique i would give her is i don't i've never been a fan of like like having the little like straw like like sticking out of your mouth and, right. and 
chewing on it kind of thing. That just, that wasn't my thing. Yeah. But anyway, other than that, great job. Good job, Rock. No, I mean, I agree with you. Like, what is it, um, E600? Like, that girl yeah. knows what she's doing. Mm-hmm. I mean, I hear you where she was just like, boop, 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 boop. But at the same time, I was like, Roxy is a veteran, like, mm-hmm. drag stress. I mean, she's been doing this for, and I'm not saying she's old. Like, the the skill of time right. is what's on her right. side that she knows. Like, not only can I whip up an outfit, but I can, like, kind of zhuzh up, right, the, mm-hmm. the outfit in, in a certain way. Um, yeah. Yeah, I know that. That was definitely apparent um, mm-hmm. in that. And to be fair, she's going toe to toe with plastique. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a, a bitch who's like panicking because she doesn't think she's going to be done. Mm-hmm. Um, technically wasn't. Um, but mm-hmm. I mean, she got clocked mm-hmm. on it. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah. So, I mean, it's like if you, if you know what your competition is and you're like trying really hard. Yeah. So I think, she did really, I think overall, like I said, she did really great this episode. I think she's been doing really good these past couple of episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, she won last week, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. No, no, she didn't. That was Nina and Nigeria. I was like, somebody won. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, that was Nina and Nigeria. She was still up there, I believe. Maybe. I think yeah. so as well. Oh, that was the acting one. She was anyway. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Anywho, we, we'll talk about that. We sure will. We sure will. Um, Gary, what about you? Um, so I want to give the shout out and the recognition. Nina's shining challenge and runway. Um, and by that I mean like this is both last the previous episode and then the most recent episode. Um, she really served up in the acting challenge. Oh yeah. In the midst of buffoonery, Nina West was a shining moment. Um, and I was just so proud of what she did. And she looked so the part. Like, because mm-hmm. it was this Valley of the Dolls moment. Yeah. Like, she came in, and I was like, oh, well, hello there in your, like, silk taffeta sheer, like, you know, number with your bouffant hair. I mean, mm-hmm. she just she just mm-hmm. looked so good. So I was really pleased with that um yeah and, and go, go ahead. ahead no go ahead well i was just gonna say i feel like there's a pos i think there's a possibility that this was planned ahead because we knew that they were pre-assigned a role correct so i think i think right i don't know if those were made custom for them like that they had to bring them or that production had done some things mm-hmm. because yeah they all had definitively like certain kind of aesthetics and looks but it served her well right. um and her runway in that particular episode also i was really proud of where mm-hmm. she came out with the cover and like you know it was a reveal although most of us could have tell figured out that there had to be a reveal coming because like that wasn't a finished like outer level mm-hmm. of stuff but she really delivered a story a la haunted mansion like murderess you know wife um widow thing yeah. she just looked really really good and i was very pleased that she got her props and then this past week what a glow up right like oh. i'm still kind of confused mm. on how it happened and i only say that because like, I don't think anybody saw it coming. Mm-hmm. Even Nina. <laughs> like, she made this big deal about, like, she doesn't want to be naked and this and that and blah, blah, blah. Which, I mean, she's not. But yeah. I get it. Like, for her, this is this is getting adult. This is, you know, mm-hmm. pushing a boundary for her image. Right. In a way. But, my. God, like, just really knocked it out of the park. And, like, it was so simple. Right. It's a two-piece dress with a corset Mm -hmm. that's been customized Mm -hmm. with matching gloves and a hat. Yeah. But it was all well done and and embellished. And just, like, so in a way, 
Oh, I, th- I just hit me. I think why everyone was so taken is because it was edited. Mm-hmm. Like, refined in a way that her regular stuff that she's been bringing isn't. Right. Like, and I it's, think that's- it's sort of embarrassing, like, on the pit stop and, like, other things where people are like, she looked amazing. She should have multitudes of these made in various colors. Like, you know, like, everyone <laughs> was like, like, wow, like, look at what you did. Mm-hmm. This is better than what you brought. I mean, like, you know, I mean, there's some of the comments that were made. I was like, well. <laughs> They're not wrong. Uh, I don't want to be that person. And I don't want to be that. Like, okay, so I'll say this. I feel like this was a step in a direction that she, that Chanel, whoo, that Nina normally doesn't take. Right. This is more vampy, less campy. And I feel right. like that is where it. I think again, knowing what we've seen of Nina's like persona and character, she's usually very high in the camp and less so in the glamour. And I think she played to that because of um, who she is as a person, her body type, and all those other things. She knew she was like, <laughs> "You're never going to do glamour." To, do a very throw 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 back on that one but this showed us and i hope her that you can still be sophisticated and vampy and glamorous and still have an edge of you and camp in it um Mm -hmm. this i wouldn't call this like absolute like what did what did the guy say what did he call it? Oh, uh, I wrote it down. Did I write it down? I didn't write it what down. What Jeremy Scott said? Yeah, Jeremy Scott said, yeah. Something sophisticated camp. Yes. Maybe, yeah. And I think this was a, oh, excuse me. Woo. <laughs> um, I think that was a very well done moment for Nina. Right, and my hope is this may be something that maybe she puts more into in the future in regards to her her drag. Um, it well, could be a new facet. Right, there's a possibility because apparently she has a one woman show that she's going to be doing in New York later this year. Mm. At least that's what I thought I spotted on social media. So I was like, "Wow!" So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, if she, if she, I mean, she loves to entertain. (laughs) Yeah. So it makes perfect sense. I'm like, oh, yeah. Put a whole thing together. Yeah. And it looked good. And and, and it was a very, like you said, edited, complete look. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So with that said, let's move on to serves. Or swerves. Swerve. Sorry. Well, no, I got I got distracted because I read what you wrote. I am confused. I'm sure oh. I will understand in a moment. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is all about the last challenge. Meeting in labor and the meeting went too long. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that now you get it. Yes, that. So that thing. I thought you meant a production meeting and I was like, oh. huh? No, no. I mean, maybe, because whoever came up with this idea. So let me, let me, this, don't get me wrong, I like the idea. I like the idea of taking, like, these campy, you know, movies from, you know, the decades and such and creating characters and having this moment where you sort of pay in homage to these movies. Mm-hmm. Great. We didn't need to do this with eight people. Eight queens coming into this lady's room with one person. So each one comes in to talk to RuPaul. Mm-hmm. They have this moment related to this to this movie, and then they leave. And then someone else comes in. And then, like, and it just, like, Ru, what the fuck are you doing in this bathroom? Like, <laughs> why have you been here so damn long? And not only that, you ain't doing anything. You're just well standing right. in the room. To be fair, right, there was no there was no through line. 
Right. Like they didn't they didn't bother to bother to pad between the eight queens. Mm-hmm. Their interactions. Yeah. Yeah. I just realized that would have that would have made a made it a little better, is if Rue yeah. actually was like going to a mirror, in between them and like, you know, trying to freshen up and maybe wipe away a tear or you know yeah. steal herself up like you know, yeah. in between every single queen and no sooner than she pulls herself together another queen walks in. Yeah, something to like like you said bring it all together Mm -hmm. these were essentially eight separate scenes right that had no connection at all to each other and it got very old very quickly because there was definitely a structure to Mm -hmm. each scene and and also hate to say this but i know it was paced it was very clear that they were reading teleprompters across the room like very obvious and that didn't help either right like yes they've done acne challenges and maybe they do in those acne challenges maybe they still use teleprompters that you know live to live or whatever uh, you know i've gotten so used to saturday night live and they're like constant reading of teleprompters which gets can get annoying but when it's that obvious because I know these aren't, you know, they're not, like, highly trained actors. I mean, right. Nina, Nina's was, I think, the most convincing to me, where it wasn't it wasn't like she was maybe continuously looking at a prompter. Right. I think, um, she, I think she was the most prepared. Right. Right. But, again, it just went on and on and on, and there wasn't really a lot there to really make it fun and enjoyable right. to me. I, I can understand that. Yeah. 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 It was yeah. problematic. Uh-huh. Just great idea in theory. This would be a great one to do with half this cast. I mean, granted, you wouldn't do it here. Like, because All Stars Nine are not eliminating anybody, but when there's like an elimination thing, right, and there's like three or four queens left, like this is the idea to do this, because then it doesn't tire out the bit. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, Gary. Um. So mine's all the same oh. thing, only I went in a different direction, so to speak. Uh-huh. I said, uh-huh. Mama, put down the ganja. Like, I don't know what you and the production team were smoking when you cooked up with this idea, but wow, it was bad. And I'm shocked by how some people were like, oh, my God, this was so much fun. I was like, was it? Was it really? Because I was bothered watching it. Mm. I was annoyed. I was like... This isn't this isn't fun. This isn't enjoyable. I don't want to keep watching it. Yeah. And I think if there had been like more elements to the movie, like like instead of doing this meeting in the late room bullshit, like just redo the movie. Like just do the movie. Like just make the movie. Make Rue be part of like these scenes or have the queens do scenes from the movie that would cost more money i know but, because they'd but, all have to have different backdrops and blah 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 and, you know. or at least do like a few like it, it, it again this needed some serious editing mm. it needed some serious editing i think the idea was sound ish but i think what should have been the case is doing a couple of the movies Maybe the higher camp ones are whatever you can afford, y'all. We know. Right. And right. then let the queens like split up into groups of three or four and then do a movie scene together. Yeah. And maybe have Rue come in and be like the surprise, like or whatever. Like something something like that. Right. Or scenes with three people in them. Right. 
I mean, it's doubling up the queens on Rue, but, you know. Yeah. So be it. I don't know. Yeah, I just, I really felt that challenge was a big swerve. I was like, I, I don't understand why. Other than, apparently, it tickled Rue. And that's probably why it happened. Hence, I said, put down the ganja. Like... Cause girl, like you, like, uh, like I'm sure when you were high, this was real goddamn funny, but it wasn't that funny, right? Just saying. <sighs> All right, let's move on to nerves. Uh, oh, this. Okay. okay, yeah, I'm intrigued. I think I know what this is about. Go ahead, Damon. What you wrote. So this is about basically the start of episode. Seven, where mm -hmm. Roxy like Roxy got the snippers from Angeria, mm -hmm. and she's all talking about the dramatics and and how like I knew I was gonna get them, but so I I wasn't sure why you were going through all of this stuff. And I want to say like um, Roxy dear, like first of all, like where were you literally like the episode before, or maybe you know whatever, where you were all like teary eyed and hiding your face and doing all that shit to like and then going behind it and just making this like that's dramatic darling like and you kind of making a point like this is like I would have just preferred you have just given it to me I'm like but also realize y'all are on a show like right. y'all are on right. a reality TV show people eat that drama up she knows what she's doing like, yeah, yeah. So like, girl, shut up. <laughs> that was my main feeling about it. Just, just shut up. Like, yeah, you know what you're doing. You know what's going on. Like, well, I mean, just... I, even her kind of the way she was acting in the in the workroom. Mm -hmm. And Jerry was trying to talk to her. I'm good. Yeah. Like everybody knew what that meant. Yeah. And I was like, good. oh, mm -hmm. okay, like. You're lying. You are lying. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Not good. And that's my main Don't thing. Don't want to like, talk about it. Like, that's why I'm giving this nerve because it feels like, come on, come on, mm -hmm. come on. You know where you know where you're at. You know what you're doing. You know what's going on. You know. Right. So like, just be be done with it. Like I kind of feel the same way-ish with Got Mick too, in a way. Cause they're like, like, yeah, you know, you know what was happening. Like, you get it. Like, don't, don't, don't think too much into it. It's a fucking game at the end of the day. Like, right. it's not that, it, it, it's not that serious unless you're Chanel. Yeah. I'm thinking on that one. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Like the okay, I'll put it like this: the only person that could be very dramatic, I feel, with getting the snippers, would be the person who literally has no skin in the game right now. That's totally fair. Right. That would have been the biggest cunt move. Right. Would be to snip her when she's down. Right. Yeah. Her being dramatic and making a scene and all of that shit, I would understand. Because fuck all y'all. Right, 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 right. Because cause literally at that moment, as it happens, what the snip represents is, to quote the, the great Kennedy Davenport, oh, 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 fuck my drag. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right. Right. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Gary. <laughs> well, you teed it up. Uh that was the reason for that. I know. The, the my 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 nerve, I said the Chanelling of Chanel. Mm. So another podcast that that um I listened to talked about the acting challenge 
and mm-hmm. how different Chanel's was from all the rest of them. In that, okay. in that, if you pay attention, Chanel comes in and RuPaul's like talking to Chanel and Chanel's like not understanding what's happening. And then she goes, wait, are we doing a bit? Like, it was so interesting because I was like, oh, yeah, this is a very different take. All the rest of them are very much like quoted right out of a movie. Mm-hmm. And so, like, you're just basically duplicating or replicating. But Chanel's was different. It felt like it It was so interesting to see Chanel portray her not in on it and then right. trying to figure it out because ultimately she just wants to go pee. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, it was yeah. so kind of bizarre in a way. And what they were saying is how meta the acting challenge was. Mm. In a in a in a strange way to represent that production was fully aware and knew what they were doing and Chanel wasn't quite understanding it, but then figured it out. Mm. And then just kept moving on. And the that I thought there was an interesting parallel that they were making to basically say Chanel has figured out that Chanel is being Chanel. And that she knows she's not really gonna win badges and she's not gonna win this particular season Mm. but it looks kind of shitty on production because it's for charity right right so she hasn't won any badges and she also hasn't won any money for her charity right granted neither has plastique well plastique has badges plastique just doesn't have money really for her charity so Talk about awkward. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's the thing. And then we have the moment where Rue's like, you're a goddamn motherfucking star. You're the first of my children. Like, you are the first that came in and this and that. And then in the most recent episode, Chanel confides and talks about the mental anguish of leaving the show. Which I honestly forgot about. I did too. Like I did, I, did I was like, wait, what? Like, I'm kind of glad they did the flashback, because mm-hmm. I was like, I remember the Medusa head moment and how the scandal yeah. of that was like that was intentional. Mm-hmm. That she, you know, there is never a moment that ever Chanel would allow that to happen. Like right. that it was planned and this and that and blah 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 and like, you know. But yeah, like, and so Chanel having this heart to heart with Rue and talking about how like she's been carrying this guilt for 15 years about that she let her down and this and that over and, like and about her choice to leave. And I was like, I was like, say what? So yeah. like that was really wild to me. And in a in a back of my mind, I was like, oh, is that what this has been all about? Just her. Like, is this sort of. like is the reason why Chanel came back is just to simply like clear her mind and resolve that piece. Mm. And that's also why she hasn't been giving us Chanel like in the cameras, in the workroom. Like we're getting Chanel on stage. We're getting the theatricality. We're getting the kind of borderline over the top, like the way she behaves as she carries herself on stage for runway but we haven't been getting that in the workroom and a lot of people have been talking about they've been waiting for 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 chanel like that's what they want it's great television and how like she and she hasn't been doing that she's been pretty reserved and pretty quiet and people have been just very confused and so there's this whole like debate about whether or not she's intentionally she knows what could happen and she's and like not allowing it to happen so you're not really getting anything out of her. And yet, like, this whole other thing happens, right? You know, and I'm like, okay. Like, yeah. apparently you've been carrying this around and now you want to talk about it. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think a bunch yeah. of us were unaware. Or had kind of forgotten. Like, I feel like once they showed that flashback, I was like, oh, that's right. She did nominate herself. Right. And I remember her. I Like, I remember she pretty much said, I don't want to be here. And it was because they weren't seeing who she was. She wasn't doing well. And, or she was doing well, but she wasn't getting 
the flowers for it, as it were. Right. Right. So. Yeah, and it was a and to. I mean, it's kind of an understatement. It was a very different time. Oh, true that. Like what the judges were attempting to do and what they were, you know, looking at and achieving. It was very much in the project runway, like meets yeah. top model, like like yeah. mo like format of a reality competition show, which was very different than where it is today. Correct. So yeah, and like I just. I just feel yeah. like they've been Chanelling Chanel and and like so a part of me is like is she in on it? Like is she really really aware of what's going on and that's kind of why she's being oddly cool as a cucumber? Yeah. I don't Cause know. Cuz that's something I'm I'm no yeah, cuz you would okay. Full tea, all the tea or shade or whatever. Um Chanel being quiet about for lack of a better phrase, losing feels off to me. Mm -hmm. Now she'll say something here and there, but it's never been dramatic. It's never been like over the top. It's sort of been very subdued. Um, like when they were talking about the number of badges everybody has, like I think that was this last episode. Right. And she's like, I don't have any. And, and that was all she said. There was nothing more to it. She kind of like let uh, let it go, and I don't think I'm trying to remember. I don't think we got a like confessional moment either after that, and that's what I'm noticing. Mm -hmm. One would think any queen that has made it through eight episodes, so there's been eight opportunities to earn a badge. At least there's been others, but at right. least eight opportunities to earn a badge. And you haven't earned one yet, but right. you're fine. But you're like, eh, you know. I have a theory. It just occurred to me because it's been 15 years <laughs> since she first came on. Maybe she's medicated. I mean, she is. Um, let me go through my notes again. I can't remember her charity off the top of my head. It's um, anxiety, anxiety and depression. Yes. Yeah. Um, let me find it. It's the Anxiety and Depression Association of America. Right. Um, yeah. Because, and what I mean is, like, I mean it in two ways. Like, a funny way is, like, she's been smoking them funny cigarettes. Like, mm -hmm. medicated. Like, mm -hmm. maybe, like, maybe she's taking smoke breaks, but, like, you know, she is very at peace with mm -hmm. things. <laughs> um, okay. Or she's, like, prescribed yeah things and that's why she's just very okay yeah and it's possible that's very i think that's very possible i mean it, I, and that might that might i guess explain like the the confusion that some people i think have in watching and seeing chanel because she is goddamn talented like i mean right there is no doubt about that and yet like she is not delivering not that she has to, but I think a lot of people were expecting some kind of diva stuff out of her. Like, and not really in a bad way. Like, I think a, pe a lot of people are like, you deserve to, like, have those moments. Mm hmm But, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's been so, but it's been, it's been really, like, it, that's a lot of nerve. I'm like, yeah. you have a queen come back. It's all this stuff. It's about charity. And then, like, this queen ain't got no badges. She ain't got no wins yeah. and she ain't got no money. I'm like, but there also is a theory that Chanel is going to possibly not sweep, but she's going to suddenly like get a couple of badges. Mm. Like they're going to do something and be like, oh, this week it's worth two or three yeah. or, you know, well, whatever. No offense. That kind of happened during the last sort of badges season. And that was with um, uh, Shay. Mm -hmm. Like there was a, I think Shay and Monet were like maybe had one badge each and right. then they didn't get any for a while. Yeah. And then we got to this point where we're near the end and all of a sudden I think the episode was like two or three badges. There was some weird number. Right. And they won that one and they ended up being in the top four. <laughs> like. Right. Right. So there's, I think there's a possibility of that as well. 
All right, you want to read and move on to the next section? Sure thing. Okay. All right, so now let's get into snaps and eye rolls, a.k.a. the hits and the misses, or sometimes we say highs and lows of these particular episodes. So who are you giving uh, snaps to, Damon? Uh, last week, Star Baby. Um, mm, okay. I am giving snaps only because of the gumption it took for her. Just I might have switched this to maybe done nerve, but I was. it took a lot to – Ta- tackle this challenge and make this garment right was it perfect no 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 it wasn't perfect but given what we saw and what it looked like it was pretty damn amazing right if she'd um, had a week to work on it yeah or maybe even another day right yeah, yeah. i just feel it was a a great like choice I, I love that she was still working on it and literally painted her mug, who knows how, in like 30 minutes or whatever. She did a really quick mug, and it was still fucking amazing. Um, and still was working on things. And then I, I, just, I, I do think sometimes a edit would have been great with that one. Mm. I don't. I genuinely don't think it needed that big of a train, personally. I think it was fine, because you had that that embellishment star thing going up the front that obviously took time to make, and while it was small, it was still right. pretty fucking amazing. So, right. um, yeah, so I just, I just think it, it was really great, and I really appreciated her efforts, and... Yeah, good on her. Snaps to her. That's fair. Good for her. That's fair. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gary, I didn't oh. see that. Um, speaking of plastique, I'm giving snaps for the unexpected dynamics of math. <laughs> I never thought in any season of RuPaul's Drag Race, especially U.S. based, that we would have this much arithmetic happening. <laughs> And the calculating and the discussing and the like gamesmanship and the subterfuge of, Uh you know, I was thinking about this last night. And actually, if you want to be effective in this game, what you should do is block somebody else who has the exact same number of badges as you because that will actually benefit you as opposed to the queen that's in the lead. And I was like, what? Like, I listened. I heard it. I got it. And I had to think about it. And my favorite part is in the edit, immediately Need and all of them are like, No, you just don't wanna be you just don't wanna be like snipped. Yeah. Like Yeah. And I was like, Right, but uh, the math is mathing. Right. In a certain way. In a certain way it is. But like you're like, But if I was in the competition, I'd be like, No bitch, you're getting you're getting blocked. Yeah. Like you are the competition. You don't need five badges. You don't need six badges. Like, yeah. In order for someone else to get a chance, you need to not have a- as many. Mm-hmm. It's fair, but it does work in a way. In a way. Well, like, I think what she was actually saying is, if you realize you're not going to be in the front but you still want to make it to the end. Mm -hmm. You need to block anybody else who's with you. Right. So like, so it's like if she has like, let's say Roxy has four. I know these aren't the right numbers. Roxy has four plastique has three and you're sitting in the, in the two pack. You Mm -hmm. want to block somebody else who has two to get you ahead. Right. As a potential. Right. Ish. Ish. Yeah. (laughs) No guarantee, but you know, yeah. and, and uh, of course, now we're it doesn't matter anymore, right? Because finally, Rue was like, Oh, by the way, did I not mention this is the last week you could block anybody? Girl, I'm gonna talk about that literally in a second, okay? Okay, okay, <laughs> so right, right, I just saw that. So, I mean, like, oh, now, now we're ending it, we're not gonna keep this gag going, we're just gonna end it, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, on the dramatic point. Got it. Whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't have the clip. I wish I had the clip and said it's chocolate. I mean, it's just it's this <laughs> gag thing, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, anyways, the yeah, math, yeah. the unexpected, yeah, the un the unexpected dynamics of math is is really what stood out to me. I was just like, okay, like this. And of course, yeah. Banji is like the most like nope. I I don't even try to follow. Like, you know, like like she is the living math meme. Of that woman with all that, like, yes, the, the, the right. algebra around her face. Like, you know, Banshee's just yeah. like, mm. like, she doesn't even try to, to figure it out. She's like, no. So, go I ahead. Will, yeah, for, for eye rolls. Yeah. I, want, I want to hear yeah, this. My eye rolls. <laughs> the, the Ruby Snippers in. Fuck that shit. Like, I'm not trying to be. It feels so anticlimactic. It feels, and I'm trying to get back to, um, I want to get back to, sorry, All-Stars. Um, the only All-Stars that we had this, which I think was seven, yeah, where there was no eliminations and they were able to block people. And I'm trying to figure out if there's a way, how long it went. Mm. So I'm wondering if it did stop as well. Because what, that was, the, that was the golden plunger? Yeah. yeah. Whatever that bullshit was. Yeah, which again... Like Ruby Snippers makes sense. I hate not to not kind of, but not really. Um, At least this has puns. Yeah. And can kind of be funny. And there's a little tee hee hee when Rue says, Which sister are you gonna scissor? Yeah. Which like sister would you scissor. Yeah. Right, right, right. Like I mean, so there's a whole like, you know, entendre lesbian esque joke in that. Um mm-hmm. But yeah, the the plunger, I don't I don't I don't remember that like really panning Locked out. Episode nine. Okay, so going back through this, it it was episode nine, episode nine was the last time someone was blocked in All Star Seven. So All Star Seven, Roger was the last person blocked, and then I go through ten and eleven. Um and 12 and there's no more blocking so they did stop it at a certain point Mm -hmm. so i guess it makes sense that it was stopping here but i feel like also it may be a little too soon because that was episode nine and this is episode eight so whatever anyway again it just feels very weird i didn't like it i think if you're going to make this be a thing make it be a thing let's keep the drama going let's keep this moving um this bullshit you know as it were moving forward let's have Roxy and Angeria keep like going back and forth with the fucking snippers, you know, like just all the things like and like we we commented earlier, let like some bullshit happen and Chanel gets blocked for some what you know, for whatever reason, just to fuck with her. Like I just like you have this this plot device that is gonna be dramatic in a way and it's one of the only real ways to cause drama in this season where no one's eliminated. Mm -hmm. So why end it now? Um, but whatever, you know, that's fine. Y'all do your thing, whatever. <laughs> yeah. There's that. There's that. Um, oh, <laughs> we talked about this. Yeah. Go ahead, Gary. I mean, I'm just going to say it officially for the record, because we talked about it earlier. Uh, that ridiculous acting challenge. Yes. Biggest eye roll of the season. Like I ain't even mad mad about the snippers. It's a stupid gag, but funny. Mm-hmm. The it's acting challenge. Funny. The acting challenge was just like, what the fuck am I watching? And it wasn't even like car wreck, train wreck. Like, what am I watching? Yeah, you know where you're like, oh, I really shouldn't watch this, but I can't help but watch. I was like, yeah. oh no, I I don't want to watch this, mm-hmm. but I have to watch it so I know what the hell happens. <laughs> and uh, yeah. And that's kind of what it felt in a way. It felt like, like I said, it felt like it went too long. It felt like, why are we, why are we still doing this? Why is this still a thing? Why are, because we did every queen. And so that meant eight scenes. Right. So, and it was one-on-one with Rue. So 
the only people in the challenge that make it funny are Rue and whichever queen walks in the door. Right. And I love Rue to death, but after a while, nah. Right. Hmm. Yeah, it felt very much like this was this was made for her, not for anybody mm-hmm. else. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it just it just didn't work. No, it didn't. It did not work. Just like that it shake and go work. wig. What three episodes ago? <laughs> Girl, it's true. It's no. so true. It was a disaster. No. I still can't get over no. that hair. I'm like, <laughs> how many regular seasons? How many All Star seasons? And that was allowed to walk out on the runway? Like, that that wig had so much shine. It was so weird, like it had never had a brush taken to it. It felt... It's, I just didn't understand how that was acceptable. But then, then, this latest episode, she comes out with this helmet, this volume of hair that... <laughs> is like striking you know what i mean like like and i was just like that is ungodly like that is huge it is voluminous it is waves it is like it was so beautiful like but ridiculously so Uh uh-huh and i'm like that's why that other wig looked so bad to me i was like the fuck happened to you I'm just trying to jump. I'm seeing which one it was. It, oh, it's um, from episode five. Oh, I thought it was six. But no, it was. It, yeah, it was yeah. just so bad. It, just, it, it was, was brassy, blonde. Like, it was shiny. It, it, was, it was just bad. It was giving Barbie doll hair. It was giving Barbie doll hair. It was given fresh out the bag. I mean, it had a little volume to it, right? But it just, like, it just, it literally looked like what they talk about all the time is that as a baby drag, you pull the hair out and you kind of shake it around and you throw it on your head and you go out and you do your thing. And I was like, no, mother does not do that. Mother shouldn't do that. But somebody, somebody allowed it to happen. Somebody did. It was somebody weird. Did. It was so weird. Wild. I mean, to me, that is worse than face Keeney. I know people got opinions on Face Keeney, and they hated when she did it. They didn't like it when she did it on the stage where it was Daft Punk. She, they didn't like it when she did it during the pandemic for the reunion or the finale or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, those are those are kind of misses. Those are weird things. But to me, yeah, that that wig was just bad. Anyways, I'm on the time. It was something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was something. It was it was not good and. I agree with this challenge, the acting challenge, as we talked about earlier, I just, it could have been something different and I feel like it should have been, it should have been something different and I feel like they did this for the sake of Rue. And you had queens doing acting that had never seen the movies. And because of that, I feel it was sort of a miss as a challenge I feel like, if anything, they should have made it mandatory to make each queen watch their own movie. Right. So they had some frame of reference. Whether you decide to replicate it, duplicate it, give an homage to it, or just fucking break all the rules and don't give a shit, Banshee, and do your own thing. Like, just saying. I mean, it's... it's Just saying. So, there's that. Yeah. You know. There's that. That was a choice... Anyways, we would love to know what your thoughts are on all these choices. Yeah. You can do that several ways. You can go visit our blog, CubsOutLoud.com. You can leave a comment on an episode there. Uh, You can send us an email, CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Or you can give us a rating. You can go to 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. Leave us a voicemail message. We'll be happy to play it. Um, You can also find us on social media outlets uh, online. Just type in CubsOutLoud as one word. And we have a Telegram where we have a Cubs Out Loud Drag Race discussion group. Um, you can go to tele- or sorry, tinyurl.com backslash telegram hyphen C-O-L-D-R. Uh, you can also find out when we're doing our regular Cubs Out Loud series with live shows like we're going to be doing uh, just very today. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's streamed over to YouTube. You can find out about that. 
at tinyurl.com backslash calendar hyphen col. And then if you want to support us, there's several ways to do that. And the first one is that you can buy merch. You love merch. We love merch. Everybody loves merch. Who doesn't want shit like to promote stuff, right? So as Damon's showing off, Consent is my foreplay. We have it in a whole series of different pride um, color arrangements. This one happens to be the drag pride flag uh, arrangement and colors. Uh, the shirts come in various colors, so you can pick size, color, all that kind of stuff. We also have Cubs Out Loud Drag Race um, merch items, such as that uh, lovely coffee mug. Um, you can get hats like I'm wearing, all sorts of different things. Ooh. Or... If that's not your gig, you can, for a dollar or more a month, you can give us money through patreon.com and be a lovely patron of Cubs Out Loud and help keep the lights on around here, as we like to say. Yeah. Or you could just tip us. You can you can give us some coin. You can go to paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud and you can make a one-time donation to us and thank us for what we've been doing. And we would gladly take that tip from you. Mm -hmm. Uh you can also pretty much find us anywhere that um, podcasts are available. Cubs Out Loud Drag Race is available as an audio uh, podcast of its own feed. So if you're really interested in this for any reason, that's fine. You can actually follow it there. Um, and we actually have a playlist on YouTube for Cubs Out Loud Drag Race specifically. Um, so you can see that as well. Damon, if people would like to get in touch with you, where would they go? If you wish to, get, ooh, if you wish to get in touch with me, Lord, that was a thing. That was a choice. Um, you can find me at theatercub79, that's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-7-9. All most beer-related sites are on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup uh, underscore umbra on Twitter or pup umbra79 on Blue Sky. Those are not safe for work. They're safe for work stuff. If you want to go to dmagamer79 on Twitter and TikTok. Gary. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. I did create my own Twitter a separate profile account called GareBear20, sorry, GareBear73 Drag. That's G A R B E A R 73 D R A G to kind of keep all the spoiler stuff over there, unless you're a dumbass like me and was preparing for the episode while you were watching the episode. And then you go visit the fan wiki and then all the stuff's already loaded <laughs> on there. So I yeah. quickly found out who in the top two was and who won. And I was like, oh. Yeah. Oh, and I think I also found out who got blocked. But to be fair, these last two episodes, not that important. Um, just saying. But with that, uh, we'll be back in a few weeks. We'll talk more about the next coming episodes. All right. <laughs> talk to you later. Bye.